Hey everybody, Mark Dawes here, uh, episode three, and this one is the importance of investing in yourself. Now, you've probably heard of Warren Buffett, he's one of the world's greatest investors, and he regularly gets asked, you know, what's the best thing to invest in, because he invests in companies and stock and stuff like that. And his stock answer reply is, invest in yourself, you're your most valuable asset. And Jim Rohn, who's a great American motivational speaker and influencer, uh, I think Tony Robbins actually trained with him for a while, you know, he was in the days before Tony Robbins. Yeah, he says, formal education will get you a job, but self-education will make you a fortune. And it's absolutely true. Now, I know lots of great people. I know lawyers, I know doctors, I know health and safety professionals, you know, nurses. And all of them have gone through formal education to get the qualifications they need to get the jobs they want. But even there are people out there who have no education, who've self-educated themselves, that are more successful financially than these people who've gone through a formal education process. And I know that some people spend thousands and thousands going to university, and I'm not saying that university is a waste of time at all, but you end up with a debt, uh, and you end up with a debt that you gotta pay back on a salary that's gonna take you forever and a day. So this is why self-education is so important. Now, when I was, uh, broke and that's the only way I can say I was absolutely financially broke I was £80,000 in debt and I thought the house was going to get taken away from us and everything else but I still invested in my education I used to buy uh, audio tapes at the time uh, Jim, uh, for Jim Rohn was, was one of them there was uh, Jay Abrahams Tony Robbins and I used to listen to these great people because the mind's a muscle the mind is a muscle just like anything else and the more you train the mind the better you become at what you train it in. Now, if you think about this, one hour of focused concentration will double the amount of neurons in a network in your brain focused on what you're concentrating on. Now, you've got networks in your brain for everything. So the, the way you sit in a chair, the way you fold your arms, the way you, the, you think, the way you drive, there's a neurological network in your brain. But most people's networks, <clears throat> sadly, focus on the negative. And I was having a chat only today with someone who is, you know, massively negative about stuff. And they kept saying, well, you know, it's a fix and it's on the news. And I saw the news and they said this. And he, he was really, you know, he said every day it's been on the news. And, and I just felt really sorry for this person because they sit there and they watch something negative and they concentrate on it and focus on it. And if they're doing that for an hour, the amount of neurons in their brain associated with that negative experience has doubled. This is why visualization training is so important for athletes. You know, they, they go through the exercises and then they close their eyes and they visualize going through the exercise again. You'll see, you see um, bobsleighers do it. They did it on Top Gear once. Because whether you're doing it physically or whether you're visualizing it, the mind can't tell the difference between perception and reality. So it grows the network associated with what you're visualizing and concentrating on. So, it, Crap, yeah, scrap the negative. I mean, yesterday I, I, I did the, a video called Take the Trash Out. You know, it's all up here. Take the trash out. Don't don't keep it in your head. And the other thing, you know, that's important today, I was, I was working with my son again today, and uh, I gave him a, a chapter of a book to read this morning. And it was a book um, by a Buddhist master. And it's a, the, the introduction to the book was really brilliant. He said, because everyone wants to be happy. The whole aspect of life is you want to be happy. Um, now, we live in a... In a technological age now where we can do anything we want to do literally anything we want to do you know we we can build things we can talk to people around the world we can do live videos like this and there's more and more technology that's aimed at making our life easier and easier yet according to a lot of people out there done the research people are fundamentally less happier now with all this technology so there's a perverse contradiction going on here and I think the reason is, and from reading research on this, is that it's the next shiny object thing. If people want to be happy, they go shopping and buy something and that external thing makes them happy. But actually it isn't happiness. It just gives them pleasure at that moment in time. And then when that wears off, they have to go and buy the next thing. So we get people who are addicted to shopping, we get people who are addicted to drinking, we get people who are addicted to drugs, we get people who are addicted to sex because they need that fix. And whatever you do on a consistent basis, if you think that's in happiness, which it isn't, it's just pleasure. When you do it and you get that release 
of endorphins in your body, it's like having a fix. Then what happens is when it wears off, your body wants the fix all the more. So the more you do it, the more the drug you need. So, you know, this technological era we live in has taught us to become very much reliant on external stimuli to make us what we think happy. When actually we need to go inside, we need to actually stop and slow down and actually go internally. And this is why, you know, I've been practicing this for years. Meditation and mindfulness are so powerful because you shut everything out and you just focus on what's inside. So if you want to be happier, concentrate on being happy, meditate and think about something pleasurable. Do it for an hour. I mean, you don't have to do it for an hour to start with. You can do it for five or 10 minutes. And I'll tell you something about meditation that's brilliant. You can't fail at it because if your mind wanders off, then you bring it back. You just bring it back to what you're focusing on. That's training it. That's training the brain. Now I've got a little dog, a little pug. He's around here somewhere. Uh, and when I take him for a walk, he's stubborn as hell. He'll want to go one way. He won't want to go where I'm going. I have to go where he goes. So I have to train him. I have to pull the lead and take him the direction he wants to go. And it's the same way that I do that with my dog, that we need to do it with our minds. And eventually, you come to a point where you realise that the external world is really a reflection of what's going on inside us. And scientists are now proving what Buddhists have known for two and a half centuries, is that we create our reality. Nothing has any meaning apart from the meaning we give it. So why am I telling you all this stuff? You know, why, why is that important? Well, I think it's a great life skill. You know, I've learned it the hard way. You know, I, I, you know, I was brought up, weren't rich, parents weren't rich, and we were brought up and told, you know, get a job, work hard, you'll get rewarded for it, and then eventually when you retire, you can get your pension, and you can retire with a, you know, a breadcrumb pension. That's how most people live their lives. But your mind is that powerful. If you use it and you focus and you learn to concentrate, you become more productive, you become more effective, and you become more efficient. So, you know, I, uh, this is the reason why, sorry, is it stops you getting distracted. Now, I know people, because uh, they tell me, they'll be working on a project, you know, building a sales funnel or doing some marketing or writing, writing a course or doing whatever, and all of a sudden they'll hear the ping of the email and they'll stop what they're doing and automatically go and check the email. It's like the dog pulling them in the other direction, but they go. And then they check the email, and if it's a good email, great. If it's not a good email, not great. And then they've got that thought in their head when they go back to doing what they're doing, what they're trying to produce. It's not effective at all. Learning how to control your thoughts through mindfulness, meditation, makes you much more effective, efficient, and productive. So your production capability goes up. Uh, and it also makes you healthy. There's a strand of, in, our, in our DNA called telomeres. Telomeres shrink with age. So the older we get, the shorter these things get. And they've spent billions of pounds and dollars, I believe, on research to, to try and stop the aging process. The one thing that actually increases the length of a telomere is meditation and mindfulness. It's astonishing, you know, just sitting there and breathing. And you've all got to breathe. <laughs> you've got to breathe anyway. So why don't you just sit there and breathe and just focus on your breath? And if you focus on your breath coming in, you're meditating. And if you focus on your breath going out, you're meditating. And if all of a sudden your mind goes off over there, just bring it back and restart the program. And the more you do that, the more you'll become akin to doing it, the more it becomes second nature. And then you've now got a network in your brain that helps you to concentrate. You know, I mean, Thich Nhat Hanh, great, great Buddhist Zen master, he's, he's dead now. And, and I saw him being interviewed by someone on telly. And they said, what's the most important thing? And he said, right now. He said, you're the most important thing to me right now because I'm giving you my time. So I have to concentrate on you. If I'm talking to you, but I'm concentrating about having a cup of tea or I'm concentrating about someone else, I'm not with you. He said, and the greatest gift I can give you is my presence. So if you think about this, you know, if you're working and that's what you have to do, focus on your work. Don't worry about what you've got to do in five minutes, 10 minutes, or, what, or even what happened yesterday. That's mad. The more we focus on what happens yesterday, we're actually going to our familiar past. And then we worry about that happening in the future and we create a predictable future. So people are living their lives in a familiar past, in a predictable future, and never in the present moment in time. 
Now, here's the thing. All change takes place. All the wonder happens. All the miracles occur in the present moment. Not in the past, not in the future, in the present moment. So, you know, right now, I mean, I haven't script scripted this. I'm just concentrating on what I'm telling you on a phone, on a stand, in the, in the hope that it will help you in some way, shape or form. You know, it's, and the, someone's just commented here, Fiona, so, so interesting, Mark, I wish I could sell the advantage of mindfulness and meditation to my son. This would turn his, so look, she says, oh, no, this would turn his life around. Fiona, get in touch. I'll be happy to talk to your son, more than happy, because it, it literally uh, t t turned my life around, and I, I mean that, literally. Um, when I when I left the armed forces, uh, I left on a, on a grudge. The, the, uh, long story short, I signed up for life for 22 years. Uh, I intended to stay 22 years. I absolutely loved the life. I got offered a promotion to become an officer. I didn't want to become an officer. Uh, I should have stayed with it. And uh, they, they said, look, everything will carry over. You'll get your pension. It'll be great. So I, I went for it. But my heart wasn't in it. And in the end, uh, um, I, I failed flying. I was a big put me through as a pilot, which bizarrely, everyone wants to be a pilot. I didn't want to be a pilot. <clears throat> but what they did was, is they lied about my pension. I found out two years after being an officer that my pension had, hadn't carried over. So I'd have done another six, ten years without any pension enhancement. So I refused to fly. And I was threatened to be caught martial and all sorts. So I resigned my commission and walked out. So, you know, after living in that world for a long time, I was very passionate about. I felt, you know, I'd taken all the values on board and the officer's words, his bond and all the rest of this stuff. And it just destroyed everything. So when I left, I was £4,000 in debt and living in a bedsit. And I was angry. I was angry at the Navy about what they'd done to me. I was blaming them. But my anger got to a point where if I walked down the road and someone even looked at me uh, on the other side of the road the wrong way, I'd, I'd go and pick a fight. I, I, I couldn't go into a pub. Uh, if I went into a pub uh, and someone looked at me, I'd be in their face. And I, I've done a blog post on it, but I was introduced to a Buddhist monk. Uh, it really freaked me out. And I, w I went and saw him out of curiosity, and he taught me to meditate. And I've been meditating ever since, and I think if he hadn't have taught me that, I'd have ended up in jail. But it, it also helped me with the business. When I decided that I didn't want to be in a nine-to-five job because I was trading my time for money, I wasn't seeing the family, um, it was meditation, mindfulness, and self-education, you know, investing in programs. I mean, I wanted to teach reasonable force and self-defense, so I bought programs, I interviewed lawyers, I read books on the stuff, and I got as much knowledge as I can. So when I went out there and started talking to people, I had something to fall back on, and I just kept reinvesting and investing in that. And that really, you know, was something that allowed me to live life on my terms. But, you know, meditation is absolutely powerful and it's funny because uh, you know I, I came out in the uh, I came out some I come out and I'm gay I came out during the pandemic and told people look I meditate it helped me cope with the pandemic no problem whatsoever I mean if you think about my job for those of you that know me I'm away from home a lot uh, actually I was told by a taxi driver once a taxi driver asked me how many miles a year I did in my car and I said about 52,000 and he told me that's twice around the world I didn't know that so I was going twice around the world, literally every year, uh, being away from home. So when the pandemic hit, Deborah and I, my wife, we were, we, we had to stay in the house together. We'd never had such a long period of time together. And divorces were going through the roof. We, when the, when the pandemic eased the first time, we went to a pub and we spoke to a, a waitress there who was a lawyer. She was a family divorce, divorce lawyer. She said that her firm had taken on additional staff because people had just realized they can't live together. Um, and divorces were going through the roof. So the mindfulness side of what I do, and what my wife does with, with her, her belief and, and her faith, have allowed us not to have a row. I'm doing two and a half years together. You know, it's been absolutely fantastic. So there are so many advantages of this. So I came out and told people I did this. And I have Paul Keats is on here. I mean, Paul has got an amazing story. Paul, you need to do a live, mate, and tell your story again. I mean, you've done phenomenal things, my friend. You know, it, you... You're an inspiration in your own right. You know, it, people think that people who meditate, you know, they, they're, they're, they're sort of weird. They've got long hair and they, they chant mantras and, you know, eat grass or whatever. You know, some religious freaks. But there's lots of blokes that meditate. 
You know, I mean, uh, I'm, I'm not a great fan of this, or at least I wasn't, but Russell Brand meditates. Now I listened to one of his um, show, his YouTube videos. He's actually a highly intelligent man and meditation took him off drugs and took him off alcoholism. You know, it's so great. I know there's a Buddhist center not you know, far from me and they were helping people get off drugs and, and, and become alcohol free just through breathing. It's a phenomenal thing. So yeah, that's my message for today. You know, it's don't rely on the external stuff to make you happy. You know, don't become the next shiny object thing just for a moment of pleasure. The external world is just a reflection of what we do internally. Go, learn to go inside more. Find that quiet space. You know, take 10 minutes a day. You know, you can download a meditation app. I mean, here's one for you. It's called Plum Village App. P-L-U-M Village App. You can download it for free and there's guided meditations on there. I use it a lot. It's fantastic. Um, uh, you know, it's, it, it's a brilliant thing. You know, so take 10 minutes out. To be honest with you, getting someone mentally strong enough to understand and believe in the benefits of meditation is key too. Yeah, it is. Okay. Um, but you've got to do it. Uh, it's all right thinking about it and it's all right you know, having an intellectual conversation about it. But it it's like marketing. You know, I do marketing and pit. I go on marketing courses and I hear people tell me all these great things about what you can do in marketing. When I ask them, what, what are your results? They go, well, I haven't actually implemented it yet. <laughs> so you're not a marketer. No, you're just someone who's been on a course. Same with this. We can get intellectual with it all you like, you know, but really go and do it. You can't fail at it. Honest to God, you can't fail at it, you know. Um, just sit there, close your eyes, breathe in, breathe out, focus on your breath. So, I mean, the first meditation the Buddha actually taught, this is true, yeah. He said to sit there, and when you breathe in, you close your eyes and you, and you say to yourself, breathing in, I'm breathing in. I mean, when you breathe out, you go breathing out, I'm breathing out. And that's it, and you just do that, <laughs> rinse and repeat that. And if your mind wanders off, grab it, bring it back, Go back through that process. This is how you develop concentration. Yeah. Hi, Jeanette. Good to see you, mate. Um, yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Okay, guys. Listen. Um, that's my message for you today. You know, concentrate on your own personal development. Self education is important. You know, you don't have to go to university to get a degree in meditation to meditate. You just got to do it. You know, and your results will be your proof. So, I mean, again, just before I go, going back to marketing, when I, I get pitched all the time by people who say, oh, we can do your marketing for you. And I say, well, show me what results you're getting for other people. Because um, I'm not interested in what degrees they've got. I'm not interested in, you know, what badges they've got and what courses they've done. I want to know what results they're getting for people. And if they can get results, I'll have a conversation with them. If they don't get results, I'm not interested. Um, so it's all about doing. Everything in life is about doing, you know. So concentrate. Uh, on, on your meditation you know practice your meditations um, and you'll get better at it it's like anything else you get better at it first time you do it, it'll be strange but you get better at it you get better at it and the more you do it the better you'll get and the stronger you get and the more productive you'll get because this is the form of self self-education and self-development it's probably the best form of self-education and self-development out there and I'll, I'll leave you with this thought um, many of you know about three years ago I had a heart attack and it was really interesting because uh, I was in Telford in Shropshire, so I did I did the intelligent thing. Um, yeah, th thanks, Fiona. Uh, Any time, darling. Um, I didn't I didn't go to hospital. I drove home. Uh, all I could think about was oh, I don't fancy dying up here. I'll drive home. And people ask me, were you scared? And this is not me trying to be a macho bloke or anything. It, um, it really it really isn't. I wasn't scared. I just didn't want to die in Telford. I wanted to come home to die, if that was what's going to happen. Because what the meditation training has given me is the ability to let go and just let things happen as they're going to go, as they fall. It's not a problem. You can let go. You you, you get rid of your attachments. Okay. Yeah, um, because the whole basis of life, the whole base of the universe, the whole base of everything is interdependent. We're all independent, interdependent on one another. Yet we're taught at school you know, to be dependent on each other, you know, to be independent rather, you know, grow up to be independent, be your own man, be your own woman, you know, um, you, you don't need to depend on others, no, bullshit. We're all interdependent, you know, if, if, if we all breathe the same air, we all have to have the same sun, we all, you know, the fact we, sh we share the same air means we share the same breath. I mean, there's, a, there's an atom called an argon, and every time you breathe in, you breathe in argons, and every time you breathe out, you, breathe, you, get, you ex exhale them. These, these atoms have been around since the birth of time. Uh, and they've probably been in the bodies of Christ, Buddha, 
Attila the Hun, Adolf Hitler, anyone. So we're all connected by the fact we breathe. You know, this is just a fact of life. So having this interdependence is really important and important and understanding that we're interdependent on one another is important. So anyway, that's all I wanted to have a chat about today. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it. If, if you want any help with this meditation stuff, you know, get in touch. I'm more than happy to, to, to help in any way. Um, Jeanette Galloway, I need to be self-disciplined. <laughs> Jeanette, be careful what you're saying here. I need to be self-disciplined and do it. Yeah, you do. I don't drink and don't smoke, but constantly rush around and don't stop for a proper meal, eating rubbish and not sleeping enough. Apart from that, it's great. <laughs> All right, take time out. Uh, you, you can actually do meditation when you eat. You just concentrate on your food. Chew it slowly, concentrate on the food. Don't concentrate on anything else. If you drink a cup of tea or a glass of wine, concentrate on what you're doing at that moment in time. That's practicing mindful meditation. I, I do a lot of mindful walking. You know, when I'm walking, I slow down one step at a time. Boom. Just concentrate on each step. My, I might only do that for five minutes, but it's a form of training. So, Jeanette, you do need to be self-disciplined, my love. All right. Okay, guys, listen, have a great day. I'll be back tomorrow because I've taken a, um, a commitment here. I've taken up a challenge to do one of these a day. If you've got any ideas on what you want me to talk about, um, let me know. But I'm normally just doing a summary of what I do during the day and things that have popped up. All right. You guys have a great life. I'll speak to you soon and hopefully see you tomorrow. Thanks, Jeanette. Bye. Bye, all.